So hello and welcome to the Andorati studio on day two of Charge 2016. And we're now joined by Martin Stadler, director and resident power and utilities expert at Ed Spearkerman and also a friend of Enjirati and uh, general Twitter know-it-all. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm very active in uh, the last couple of hours. <laughs> I have no, a hard time catching up with all the interesting sentences I catch and I want to uh, keep for myself as a memory, so I'm always tweeting it out. <laughs> well, if you're really curious to find out why I'm saying this, check out Martin's Twitter handle at, at Office Stadler. Um, really exciting stuff there and it's actual opinion-based. Speaking of That's opinion... Correct. yes. <laughs> I'm never shy of opinion. Exactly. You've probably figured that out by now. Oh, of course I know. Compliments always. Okay, speaking of opinions, um, day one so far, and there were some really interesting debates. I've um, taken the liberty of summarizing some of the, the, the topics that got you talking on Twitter. Perfect. So are you happy for, for us to go through this? Of course, sure. Okay, cool. I'm going Give to call you out <laughs> to point one, um, you know, around um, TSOs. And one of the big changes we saw was there was a lot of TSOs talking about uh, brand power. It left me thinking, what the hell's happening here? What have you done with my TSOs? Suddenly they know about brands. What do you think? I think it it's, uh, was the biggest surprise to me uh, at day one. And actually, Friedrich mentioned it yesterday at, uh, uh, in the evening at the reception and said uh, when he started about uh, talking about energy branding, he thought, well, transmission and distribution brands, that, does, that concept doesn't work. It doesn't go together. Branding and transmission and distribution doesn't go together. And he had to admit, well, I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, they actually were the ones who were the strongest advocates mm. for um, establishing a connection between brands and people. And I, I thought that was amazing. So it really, they really got me on this because I wouldn't have expected that coming from their angle. Mm. I would have expected that from, from the energy producing mm. companies because TSO are more distant from the end consumer. Um, but um, so to mention just two, so Agrid, the, the, the Irish people, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also Stedin from the yes. Netherlands, actually did an amazing job uh, explaining how they evolved from being yeah, something technical in the background, no one really understood what they are doing, um, moving into a position where they actively tried to make a difference in society, also explaining about the difficulties, um, but also very much inviting people to participate. Mm. So not only working on understanding that people know what they do, but also inviting them to participate. And that, I think that's awesome and, and that's actually the way to go. Could I ask your opinion on something here? Of, and this is, I mean, obviously, and this is the crunch here. Did it kind of say something about the retail position? Is that, does that reaffirm some of the points that perhaps the retailers are kind of taking this for granted? Um, or maybe the TSOs have woken up because they actually are in need of some exposure? Well, I think the pressure on the TSO is not as high as it is on the retailers. Mm. Yeah, you may be right. So the, probably the retailers are more in a comfortable position, so in their comfort zone. So mm. obviously pressure is not high enough. I don't know what it is. Or it could be uh, a, false, a, a false sense of security, right? Yeah, I hope... At, at the time where we, we have reached now, um, they feel the pressure. I hope they don't feel secure um, as they have. And uh, probably um, I was the bad guy yesterday when I called uh, Shell uh, the embodiment of evil. Um, so I'm not shy of saying that, uh, saying that while I was sitting next to one of the Shell private energy guys. Um, so I hope they feel the pressure. So I, mm. I mean, they're not naive. Mm. But what I, what I have expected from, from the retailers mm. is um, actually talking more about that customer centricity and that connection uh, to people. And actually, yes, I heard that, mm. but actually not as emphasized as I would have expected it. So um, it was a really a, a positive surprise that the TSOs embrace um, that idea so, so much. Okay. Well, so this is kind of the good side of the equation, you know, the TSOs coming out in force, you exactly. know, kind of taking the stage and just, you know, sort of, you know, uh, how do you say it, getting all the attention, which is good. Then there were some TSOs that you didn't necessarily agree with. Um, no, do you want just, to explain the thin grid incident? What was that? <laughs> it, was, it was just, uh, let's say, a minor irritation. Now, I really like the guys, and I think the branding is amazing, um, and they have done a great job. Mm. But uh, when the CEO was explaining about the strategy, the way they came into the, the branding they want to pursue in the coming mm. years, um, they, he showed a, a strategy slide. 
and it says as one of the core strategy points um, we know what we do and why we do it. And I thought, that's a prerequisite, guys. If any company or brand doesn't know what they're doing, well, then you don't have a right to exist, sorry to say. <laughs> so we need to talk about that branding thing, right? <laughs> okay, okay, fine. I'm going to move away from this one before one of us gets sued. Um, one of the other points um, was, it was in fact, um, Bente from Statcraft, yeah. and, and, and not just Bente in, in person, because I think she's a lovely lady, um, but, but also it was more at the point of, of sustainable business, yeah. and, and, it, in, and quite interestingly, sustainable branding. Exactly. So do you want to elaborate on this? Yeah, so to me, um, uh, the, the Stratcraft keynote from Bente was one of the most inspiring ones because she was really energetic and passionate about what, we were, what she was talking about. And I like that very much. You could feel her personal connection to the issue she was talking about. And um, it was about the, the difference communication has uh, or makes. And uh, it was not only about communication should create better business, because I was emphasizing on that in, mm. in my talk, but she said, it's about value creation on different mm. levels. And that's actually true because with a communication, you establish the connection to people. And that's not only selling something, but it's pursuing um, an idea, a purpose. And um, to me, that was uh, very credible that Startcraft is, is investing in that and believing that actually. So I like that very much. And to, if I might say one more sentence, <laughs> okay. I like that because it was one, one red thread leading mm. through the first day because mm. Jim Rogers, uh, the former CEO of Duke Energy then mm. said, yeah, to me, the ultimate sustainability is um, if, if we create value for all shareholders and not only uh, for all stakeholders, sorry, and not only shareholders. And I think he made uh, quite a point there. And I had the feeling that they were both on the same line, Ben team and then Jim here. And I strongly agree with them. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I was actually going to pull pull aside the Jim Rogers thing because I, I quite agree as well. And it's, it's refreshing to hear that from someone at the top of the um, organization chain. I need to be very careful and not say food chain because um, <laughs> that would just be presumptuous. Um, Funny enough, though, what you said there and the way you explained Bente's point around, you know, business value and actually value creation, um, it, it's kind of killed one of my counter arguments because I felt there was a, a response on Twitter that, hang on a second, you know, not all activities need to have a dollar value. Mm. You know, sometimes you do exactly. stuff just because it's right. So exactly. I guess that's what you're saying, right? Exactly. It's, it's value creation, which may be dollar or non-dollar non value. Exactly. So uh, value not only in a dollar sense. I, mm. I totally agree. And you also have to understand that sometimes um, it it has dollar value, but in a, in a longer term, in a longer perspective. So um, I referred to it yesterday in the keynote as a side effect. So um, mm. get away from that um, sticking to the figures month by month or quarterly, which a lot of CEOs do, because uh, they're still also in the energy, well, especially in the energy sector, they're financially driven mm. and they're engineering driven. Mm. So um, one of my favorite quotes uh, was uh, yesterday, I, I can't remember who said it, um, that you don't want marketeers to run your nuclear power plant, but the other way around, you don't want to engineers to run your marketing and branding. And that's so true. <laughs> but a lot of people haven't embraced that idea. And it's so catchy, it, it just brings it to the point. Exactly. I feel, I feel like we need to strap line or, or are you, are you, have you tra trademarked that quote? Can I, can I bite it on Twitter or no? It's, it's not mine. So oh, right. it's, it's a quote. I quoted someone else. <laughs> I have, I have uh, to check on my Twitter uh, who said it. It's not mine. I won't take the credit for it. But, but it's absolutely fascinating because um, yeah it, it's really interesting especially I think and maybe you can correct me on this as, as a branding and marketing expert some of the the real value of brand power you know is kind of in the short term non-dollar value in the long term it's, it is dollar value right that is the end game everyone here is running towards profitability if you ain't profitable you'll probably go broke you know you will go out of business it, of well course. that's the point I, I know that we all have to to earn money I mean that's I'm, I'm not naive um, mm. And uh, branding can also be about um, having short-term effects, mm. um, but it is important to understand that branding is not about advertising or marketing. Mm. It's uh, to me, it's about bringing a business strategy to life. And mm. bringing a business strategy to life means making a connection to people. Mm. So um, I was so that's very the strongest KPI, really. Exactly. So yeah. I, was, I was happy that a lot of people emphasized the trust bit of brand. So it's important to be 
uh, credible and trustworthy and you know, it trust. Um, but what I was missing a little bit uh, was that you also have to create relevance with people. Yes, mm. you can be a trustworthy brand, but if you're not relevant, if you don't matter to people because you don't have something to offer or don't talk about mm. something that is important to them, mm. why should they care about you? So bringing these two things together I think mm. is very important and I don't know if people just um, understood it just intuitively, mm. but um, I didn't hear you that explicitly yesterday. So No, you do have a point because I, I think probably Probably Tamara McClary is probably the only person that makes a point of saying, look, I'm not asking oh, yes, you all to get on. I'm a very strong advocate for this. What we're exactly I, I, right. I like her. Well, I, look, it she's me, great. It, it took me a year to really understand what she was on about. I yeah. used to think she was just saying everyone needs to tweet. And then we had the interview yesterday. As you know, Adi, I was telling you that I'm not saying everyone needs to tweet. I'm saying if you do talk to someone, pay attention. That's, that's the point of talking, exactly. right? Um, and it's funny we've gone down this route because it brings us to the, the other points of day one, which was um, honesty and transparency versus fluffy campaigns. Now, us here on the studio, and including the camera crew, we've had a big debate on how we feel about energy brands and branding in general. You know, we have our own opinions as energy consumers. And, and the reality is this is one of those weird industries where even the guys who are involved in the conversation are actual consumers of said products. So, you know, it, it's very hard to say something and not have a personal feeling on that. Of course. Now, Martin, you've got a very strong view on, on, on this. What do you think? Well, um, to quote Bent again, she said, yeah, it's, it's really about uh, honesty and transparency and not fluffy marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I still have seen uh, some fluffy marketing campaigns. Uh, I, I see a lot of progress, so I have to admit that. Uh, but I think what we need to know, and I can't remember who said it, apart from myself, um, <laughs> that we have to embrace the idea that green energy is not uh, a Disney world with Bambi running around and mm. cute rabbits and, and puppies. Um, every source of energy mm. and every means of energy production has negative effects on our environment. Mm. And we have to be honest and transparent about that. So mm. it doesn't make sense to say we're all of a sudden green now. Yes, there are new companies who work only in the green sector, but for a lot of the um, established companies, that's not true. And we see a development in Germany where big companies try to split off mm -hmm. some of their energy production, be it the new ones or be it the conventional ones. And to me, that feels like avoiding responsibility. And I think you can't fool people these days. They know about your history. And mm -hmm. it, is, it just makes no sense to pretend that you can change uh, just uh, in in a second. Mm. So be honest and say yes, of course, and we will need uh, coal and gas and, and also nuclear power for quite some time. Um, but make clear what are your efforts, what are your aspirations, what are your goals, mm. what is the challenge we together face as a society, and and let's try to do it together. I think that's the one to that's the the mm. thing we should focus on. Mm. And. Uh, yeah, it's not about fluffy marketing campaigns. We're all of a sudden green now. It's a wonderful world. It's quite interesting you say that. What comes to mind is separate facts from fiction. And, and when I say that, Brexit comes to mind. But I don't, you know what, to be honest, that's not this debate. Um, okay, let's come to today, the that present. That when you ask people. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, shots fired. I'm a strong advocate for democracy. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay, we've come to... to pretty much the, the end of the uh, interview, because this is fun. I'm, I'm having the most fun I've had today, to be honest. Um, and talking about the present, um, Essence partner is Mia Shabata. Uh, and she's, she's, she's quite a, 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 how do you say, direct person. She doesn't mince her words. Um, what did you take on her, her view on, on um, you know, the, telling your own story and not letting it be told by someone else. Yeah. Um, and even the question of cost for branding, I know it's two questions, I have a habit of doing this one by one. Okay, let's start with telling the story yourself. Exactly. So, yeah, what I really loved, and, and she really had a great point there, was um, that a lot of people think uh, branding is something um, you have to afford or you have to have a budget for it, or a lot of companies think, we don't have a budget for brand. We can't do that, that's only for big corporations. And that's not true, and the, she just made a point saying, someone else will do the branding for us if we don't do it proactively ourselves. And I like that very much because it's so true. People will still talk about you. They, they will have a perception. And anything you do will create 
an image in people's hearts and minds. And that's important to understand. So you don't have a chance to avoid branding. You cannot not brand. So um, you better should um, try any effort uh, to, to be as positive uh, to the inside and to the outside world uh, as possible. So it's um, being honest internally, but also being honest to the outside. And then create not an image, try not to be something you are not, but be honest and talk about the topics you, you would like to pursue. And uh, don't leave it to other people. But at the same time, I would like to add to, to her, um, don't be afraid of a lack of control. Because I know that a lot of, especially CEO level people, are afraid of social media because they think, we're not in control anymore. What is said about our company? Yes, that's so true. But that has always been the case. Now, these days, it's very transparent to the public because you can read it on Twitter or any other social media channel. And actually, it's a good thing. So just embrace the idea that people like to talk about you. And that's a great thing. So just try um, to step into the dialogue and, and yeah, just say goodbye to the idea that you can talk to people and they have to take it or leave it. No, establish a dialogue and start listening to people. So that's basically my main advice. Uh, I also was trying to make that point yesterday. <laughs> exactly. You heard uh, Dr. Stadler's, Dr. Stadler's words of wisdom. Take them, listen to them and do something with them. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. Great and, to be here. Of course. And thank you as well for tuning into this session. If you'd like to hear more about branding, marketing strategies and also value creation, please check out the other interviews on the stream and check out andrati.com for more insights. Thank you. Goodbye, guys.